Well, let's move on to the second church, because remember, I told you all three churches have the same struggle. And I would like to start in verse 18 of chapter 2, and look at how Jesus searches our hearts and minds. He's looking at the churches one by one, and he's writing them a letter with his diagnosis after spending time looking at them. Uh, starting in verse 18, and to the angel of the church in Thyatira, write, these things says the Son of God, now look at this, that has eyes like a flame of fire. Do you see he's searching? What Jesus is saying is I have laser like eyes. I was reading in uh, New York Times about a new acquisition that the U.S. Army, the Marines, uh, our military is getting where the soldiers can actually wear a device where through thermal imaging and I don't know what else, they can actually see the movement of people through walls. Wow. I mean, it kind of sounds like superhero stuff. But scientifically, there's some device you can wear that can can read the signature of, of body heat or something, and they can actually, through thermal imaging, see the occupants inside the room. Wow, that's really neat. Jesus says, hey, I've always had that. I can see, not through the walls, I can see what you're thinking. I can see what you're feeling. I have eyes, look what it says in verse 18, like a flame of fire, and my feet are like fine brass. What is this brass? This is speaking of what I was talking to you about earlier in an earlier class, the chastening or the disciplining or the spanking of God. He does not allow us to continue in sin. And he said, my feet are like fine brass. I know your works, verse 19, your love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. So in Thyatira, he says, those of you that, that are justified and sanctified, I'm watching you. But now, look at his condemnation. Verse 20, nevertheless, I have a few things against you. You allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and to eat things sacrificed to idols. They were not just comfortable around sin. They were engaging in sin. Now, for me, um, I get notifications uh, and, and notes from people who are watching these classes on YouTube. And I told my wonderful wife, Bonnie, uh, who distracts me all the time in this class. She's actually sitting out there, and she's the one person in the whole world I'd like to spend all my time with, and when I, I have to not look at her too much or I'll get off target. But I got a, a note this morning from a fellow that said, I've come to know the Lord. I fell away. I got involved in drinking and got involved in drugs, and the Lord has taken those out of my life. But I'm still struggling for the last... the." past year and a half with the same thing as verse 20. I'm committing sexual immorality and I'm compromised. This one, this fellow that wrote to me said, <coughs> excuse me, he said, I am struggling with putting off, with being renewed, with putting on. And he said, I know I'm justified. But my problem is the sanctifying work. And I said, well, what you're experiencing, you told me about all these struggles he's having in his life. As I said, the Lord is chastening you, disciplining you. He's spanking you so that you will take his grace and deny ungodliness, put it off and say no. See, the grace of God opens the prison door. We're not locked into our temptations and sins anymore. We can forcibly say no and depart. As the Lord says, let everyone that names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Look at verse 22. What happens if we don't repent, as verse 21 talks about? Well, the chastening, the discipline that God has is severe. Verse 22. Indeed, I will cast her, that's this false teacher, into a sickbed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent. And verse 23. I will kill her children with death. Oh, you know what? 
1 Corinthians 11 says, from verse 23 all the way down through verse 27, it says, those who partake of the Lord's Supper in an unworthy manner, if they do not repent of sin, will become weak from their disobedience. If they still do not repent, they will become sick. And if they still do not repent, the same thing as in verse 23, they will die. I will kill, verse 23, her children with death. And the churches will know that I am he who searches the minds and the hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now continue to verse 24. Now to you, I say, and to the rest in Thyatira, as many as do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan. Now remember, each of these letters are saying that within the church, there seem to have been those who were actually living out the sanctified life, and then there are those that are compromised. And you see him speaking to both halves of the church. As many as have not this doctrine, they're the ones who are not being involved with Jezebel and her fornication and immorality. And to this group, those that are, he says, I want you, I want you to repent. And then he continues in verse 24. Uh, As they say, I will put on you no other burden, but look at verse 25, but hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works to the end, to him I will give power of the nations. This is a future promise of of serving the Lord. Um, He will rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed in pieces like the potter's vessels, as also I received from my Father, and I will give him the morning star. So Jesus is saying, as he said to his disciples, remember, uh, I've told you often, there's nothing new in the book of Revelation. And as Jesus told the disciples that they would sit on 12 thrones, Jesus is saying, we also will help him in the millennial kingdom. After we're in heaven, we will come back and be his servants, much as we have seen others that come uh, like Moses and Elijah during the ministry of Christ. And then look how verse 29 ends. I have a box around it on the slide there. He who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The Lord is saying, true believers, those who have been justified and sanctified, they will hear and they will respond. 